It is always recommended that dogs who have suffered from burns should be seen by a veterinarian as soon as possible. The information provided in this video may be helpful if a veterinarian trained in treating burns is not available and treatment in the field must be performed. This video should be viewed in its entirety before any procedures are considered and performed by qualified personnel. It should be kept in mind that when a dog that has been evacuated from a fire scene, they may very well have burn injuries as well as be dehydrated. Before treating the burn injuries to decrease the stress and discomfort on the animal, a licensed veterinarian should inject the dog with a sedative first and give it a chance to take effect before any injuries are treated, about five minutes between injection and the start of the treatment. Subcutaneous fluids may also need to be prepared and applied if the dog is dehydrated. Once the dog is sedated, if there are large flaps of tissue that are no longer viable and barely attached, it may be appropriate to remove them. Though the remainder of this video involves the replacement of bandages, the treatment materials used and the concept supply remain the same. In the case of bandage change, the existing bandages should be soaked in a combination of chlorhexidine 2% and distilled water, so as to aid in the loosening of the bandage material and aid in a less painful removal of the bandages during changing. The application of the fluid does not sting or cause any discomfort to the animal. While the procedure is being done, it is a perfect time to clean out the kennel area, put down clean linens, fresh water, and food. Recommended materials for bandage changes include distilled water, chlorhexidine 2%, honey, silvadine, telpha non-adherent pads, large and small sizes depending on the size of the area you'll be treating, casting padding, two inch size is preferred, but other sizes will work as well, cling wrap, vet wrap, wound and skin care cream, tongue depressors, and gloves. Wow. You, you just want to take the, the pressure, they're, they're already stressed, the light sedation is going to be really helpful for them to not go into shock because they're already in so much stress. That's what I would say. Yeah. Also, for new dogs, they may need um, fluids. So, subcutaneous? Subcutaneous fluids because like Lady, she was out for quite a long time. But it just helps reduce the stress anyway, especially with the heat and the fire. You know, um, it's just a nice thing to be able to do. Because if you're lightly sedating them, they really shouldn't be drinking water or eating. Okay, so what did you put? start out by putting in there? Chlorophyll, chlora, chlorhexidine solution 2%. And how much did you put in there? Um, well, I'm going to make it sky color. So I put some blue in there and without the... It's just a mix. It's just a feel for the mix. So it's so, like cooking. It's not, yeah, it's not it's an exact chemistry. size. It's not exact. Okay. It, this will not hurt them even if you put it on straight, but I like to mix it with some uh, distilled water so we're not introducing anything. Right. So he's got... Bandages that could be really stuck to his feet. Right. We don't want to rip off any of the good stuff mm -hmm. that's already grown. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to do is actually pour it into this thing. Hi, baby. Oh, the boy. What a good boy. This is a nice boy, and if he was a bad boy, I'd leave this on, but this is a very sweet dog. So all I'm doing is going under there. So it gets soaking wet, basically. Yep. And basically, he doesn't, he doesn't like the feel of it. It doesn't sting. Right. It doesn't hurt. It's cold, though. 
Do you want me to come in and hold him? Yeah, would you? Sure. Put honey or sovadine on his um, wounds so it doesn't stick. But this stuff can still stick. Just stick it in there. And it starts to kind of squish around. Step over you. Yeah, I get some more. Awesome sauce. Yeah. You'd be in such a good one. One bandage already came off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because. Oh, what a good boy. Boy, they're going to get to me to a point. You're such a goat. So great. So great. And then if you take him for a walk, it lets him pee and move or loosen these things up. Do we need to put that one bandage back on him? I don't think so. This is the this is the foot that's actually feeling really better, and um, we're going to clean it anyway. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Yeah, I'm going to take him outside, let him lift his leg, and uh, he'll get dirt on it. But we're going to clean it. Right, it's going to all come off. The faster we can get these bandages off, the better. Right. And the less amount of time that they are dealing with the disruption, yes. the, the less traumatic it is for them. Not that yes. it isn't traumatic anyway. But. It's traumatic and it hurts. So, um, Cassie, what are you, you're just loosening up the vet wrap there, is that what you're doing? Yeah, so I've always been taught to loosen up the vet wrap, so that way when you put it on, I'll show you the difference right now. It's not so tight, you don't want it to cut off circulation, um, and that can be more damaging for them. So like, this one, how it's loose. And then when we put it on, we'll be able to like wrap it without having to like stretch it out. Put any additional stress on it, which might actually accidentally tighten it up as you put it on the dog's leg. Exactly. Where as opposed to this, you see like if you have to open it, you have to keep pulling it. Right. And which can cause more damage for them. I've just always been taught to loosen it up. We have everything that we need, and it's not, you know, we're not scattered looking for everything. Just like doing surgery. Let's see. And so right now, I'm soaking the gauze, the sponges in the Clorhex that's diluted, so that way we can clean. So that's the that's what you use to clean the wounds yep. with? Okay. <laughs> so this is the diluted Clorhex. Um, you can use regular water. Um, you can also use distilled water. Distilled water helps it not get so granulated if it sits there for a little bit. Um, so we're trying to do that. I'm going to your glasses on the panel. Thank you. Well, and the distilled water is more sanitary. Yeah, yeah we like it better. At first, we didn't use it because we didn't have it. So every every time we add something, we can use it. So let's, let's talk about that for a minute before you pull the dog out. You know, going into fire season next year, what are some of the things that we would want to be sure to have um, plenty of in the event that we run into situations like this again. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in the event that you guys run into this again, you either want to have honey, 
for silver. And that both helps with burns. And when you change both of them, the honey and the silvanine, every day, you use different ones. They each have antibacterial properties and they work together really well. Also, it provides a really nice barrier because you want to have a good thick barrier on those uh, burns. Okay. Yeah, um, and then also you want to have, it's also called Tefl pads, but non-adherent pads. There's a couple different sizes, and you just put them over the wounds. Um, you can cut them. You, you want to try to get as much of the wound as possible, because if you don't, um, the gauze, the cotton wrap can get stuck to it. It makes it a little hard to take off. Um, and then after you do this, you put the cotton wrap on it, and you want this to be a tight but not too tight to where it's cutting off circulation um, and then after that I call it cling wrap um, and then you put this over the cotton to help secure it even more and then um, you want this to be a little bit tighter around it and you want to make sure you always get the bottom of their feet all the way to the top of her um, above the wound. Like you're going to go the wound. And we found that two inch, what do you call this wrap? Um, yeah, so this is bed wrap. Two-inch wrap works better. We do have some big um, wrap, and that's three-inch, and that still works too. But the four-inch is just a little bit too big to mm -hmm. manipulate around their wall. Right. Yeah. Right. It just makes it a lot easier for us as well as the pet because then you know it, they're off the table a little bit faster. Uh, so it's all about trying to get them to be comfortable. Uh, so this we also have saline solution. Uh, this is to help clean some of the wounds um, as well as the diluted chlorhex. Uh, we've kind of made holes, just so you can see, we've kind of made a couple holes on the top so that way we can kind of squirt it like that um, so it's a little bit easier and it's not going everywhere. So you don't want to ever pull dry uh, bandages off. The right, right. You always want it to be moist or soaked. Um, and Joanne, she watches great video, yes. <laughs> awesome video. Um, did you already explain that part? No, but no, not really. Um, that you take the mixture and you put this, you just basically just flood their um, their bandage. And so that's what we did earlier. That's what we did earlier. Okay. Yeah, put it inside and on top, and just let it soak. Then we took him for a walk, which is really important. You need to have um, mm -hmm. exercise, and we're hoping that that means that most of his bandages are going to be loose. Uh, one actually already fell off, so we're, we're, but that wasn't because of the soaking; it just fell off. Right. This also is really nice for spray uh, because there's going to be singe marks and things like that, things that you're not going to be able to band bandage. And it's Vetrocin Plus, okay. and it's really a nice antibacterial. And if anybody lives in Little Shasta Valley, they've got some of this, and they've got animals because it's just so nice. And people put it on themselves too. Is that liquid? That's not liquid bandage, is it? It's not, okay. but it's uh, wounded skin care. And okay. it, what it does is it not only puts a really nice cover on their antibacterial supplies. Oh, okay. And um, we also have tongue depressors. So that way we can dip it into the honey um, and with each paw you want to use a new tongue depressor as well as the silver um, and then you always want to make sure that you have gloves on um, different dog different gloves or if your gloves get a little too dirty you want to switch them out uh, you never want to go into it barehanded um, just because you know you can wash your hands a hundred times a day and you can still have germs mm -hmm. and bacteria and you're going to transmit it to them and it's going to make them you know, worse off. Um, and then you always want to make sure that you're muzzling when a dog is wounded, no matter how friendly they are. Um, you know, when you're in pain, you snap. Mm -hmm. So I broke my arm. I was in pain. I snapped. So it's you just have to like muzzle. Uh, I have to take a very high sedative <laughs> <laughs> because I was a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> So, uh, is it just you two ladies tonight? Yes. Okay, do you need a third? Um, or are you, okay, just the two of you? I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'm offering to help if you'd like me to, but I will stay out of the way. You know what? If we need it, we'll call. Okay. You're going to be right there? I, I will be right here. When, when the um, wounds are fresh, definitely need somebody to hold. 
these guys now we have a nice sedative with him and uh, so you also have a rapport with him he's yes. he's more used to this he process. knows us and that's something really nice too Hi, is to be as calm as possible when you're working around these dogs they're going to pick up your um, energy in in yourself and so you need to be and we put less energy I am is definitely what was that score? <laughs> well, you know what? He's gonna do fine. You wide awake, Come on. Come on. Come on. make sure that you're doing you're helping them not oh, hurting yeah. them. Yeah. And you know some of the dogs could have been so injured that they need to be euthanized. Mm -hmm. yeah. So talk to me for a minute about um, and, and we can do it after this paw um, if it's easier for you to focus but talk to me about lessons learned so far through this process. Um, when you know something is wrong, even if they are a vet, you speak up. So with burns, one thing you don't want to do is, so let's say I'm just going to do that and then wrap it. You never want to do a wet to dry because what's going to happen is you're going to literally peel everything off that you're working hard for. What do you mean by wet to dry? Um, so a big no-no is you don't want to add that gauze, that wet gauze, and then start wrapping it with casting material. Because then it's going to get dry. Oh, and it's it's going to sink into that wound. And what we ended up having to do was it took an hour a foot to soak those bandages off these dogs. It was very exhausting and they were really suffering also. Um, so you always want a barrier and that's what the honey's going to be. It's the honey is going to be a barrier. And then we use a non-stick Tesla pad. Tesla pad? Tesla pad, yeah, sorry. Um, these guys, and, and the bigger ones were, have been nice. These guys are starting to heal. But he was burned way back here and so it's really nice to use one solid one. Also, when you're doing this, and then right now I'm going to put, you know, the honey and the Tesla pad. You don't want to do it while the paw is soaking wet. Um, you know, you want it to be as dry as possible. And it's easier, for some reason, to put the honey on the pad and then put it on the paw. The other way around with the silvidine. It's easier to put the silvidine on the paw and then the pad. We're just learning all that. And so you alternate from one night to the next. So you, you'll do honey tonight, and then you'll do silvidine tomorrow. Every other day now. Today okay. is going to be. Yeah, this is. It's been. He didn't get a change yesterday, and it was silvidine. So tonight is going to be honey. You notice right here. 
this is all getting it's here. Good. I mean, it sure does. Compared to those pictures that you showed. Yeah. <laughs> no. But I bet you, Courtney, you could get you some if you want. Did you? Yeah. Did you ever do that? So when you're doing the sylvadine, it's easier to put it on the paw and then put the pad, pad on. on. But with the honey, it's easier to put it on the pad. And I don't know why, but it just And, and that's okay. Well, it, it actually makes sense to me in a, in a weird sort of way, but... So you clean the paw, or you remove the bandage. So you soak the bandage, you take the bandage off after it's had a chance to be on there soaked for a while. Then you clean the paw, dry the paw, and then you uh, either put a uh, telpha pad with honey or a telpha pad with um, silvadine on it. Right, yeah, and something with brand new burns is there's lots of skin, lots of skin, um, that's been burnt and it's in a shard or chart, and you don't want to pull that off. The bandages, they will naturally slough off with each change, and so you don't cut or if, if there's something that's hard or something like that you do, but mainly, let nature take its course. Yeah, you want to try to let nature take its course as best as possible. Um, if so, like when they came in, um, they had a big flat. One of them had a big flat hanging, and you, you can cut it as close as you you know to the pad as possible. But you want to leave a little bit of room. So I'm just changing my gloves because when I opened it, honey came out on it, and they were very sticky. So you would say that the way you're treating this now seven days later is you've learned an inordinate amount of, of skills um, as yes. to what you started out with yes. a week or so ago when this dog first I came I sure out. have. So I, I knew a lot, but I have definitely learned as the process has been going. You know, being from the city, <laughs> you do things a little bit differently than when you're out here. Yeah. Now what you're putting on right now is what? This is the cast padding. So this, you know, helps everything kind of stay in place. And you want to make sure that you get the front of the toes. Basically making a seal so that no infection and no uh, oxygen. Uh, burns hurt, so you don't want a lot of air on them. So that's why you need a barrier too. So Cassie, what did you just put on there? Um, so I just put on the clean wrap, which is also known as comforting stretch gauze bandages. Okay. So you put the casting material on, then you put the clean wrap on, and now you're putting the vet wrap on. Yeah. He's dreaming. He's dreaming. Yes, he's kind of chasing a bunny right now. His tail was wagging a minute ago. And these can still slip off. Yeah. They can. Because we don't want to make them so tight. But he cut off the circulation. Yeah. yeah. Somebody needs to be tutored. He is. They have <coughs> had their, um, their scrotums burnt, though. And so that's where the spray comes in. These scissors are really important also. So these are bandage scissors. Okay. There's a couple different sizes. My favorite one are the babies. Mine are the big ones. <laughs> Everybody's got their favorite. Yeah. So it's very it's okay. important that when you take off bandages from a dog, you don't want to use straight scissors. It's super, super important that they have um, this little protector on the bottom so you're not getting or making them or taking anything off that don't need to be coming off.
And what we've learned too is at one point, because they were under so much stress, what I wanted to do is take off two bandages at a, at the, at a time. Um, and so that we both could be doing it and somebody could help me hold it. But it caused too much stress. Did you, don't you agree? Don't you agree? Too yes. It, it was just, that's another thing that we've learned. Is One even though time. it seems, yeah, even though it seems like it would have been cool and they wouldn't have had to been on the table as long, it just, it didn't work. Oh, look at that granulating skin. All of this white is granulating. It'll eventually turn black, but then that, that's a good black. But right now, this is so good. likes flies. <laughs> so we always try to cover the bandage that we did do uh, just so we don't get it wet when we clean it. Uh, But you put tape on the bottom and it kind of helps it stay more secure um, and then also because sometimes it can slip off but it also like helps it from getting any dirt or debris or anything if there's any nooks and crannies. We all also discovered it's kind of normal to run into maggots at the very first because they've been out exposed. Mm -hmm. Maggots are nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Just knock them off and keep cleaning. Um, we really only ran into uh, okay. uh, we only really ran on a couple of maggots, right? Yeah. And that wasn't even on any of these dogs. And it was on Miss Lady. And she was out for a long time. She was the one that I was uh, yeah. fire I was gonna say it's probably due to the fact that she was out in the elements longer than anybody else was. Yeah, I think so. Did we foul that? Yeah. I'm sorry, I could have taken that and opened that up for you. So even if, so like right there, I dropped the other towel pad with the honey. I still have to change it even though he's you know, the only dog that's up here just because it's not sanitary. Right. It's been also really nice working with Cassie because both of us have been learning fast and we've been willing to try anything. And it's that, you know, if this isn't working, then we're going to do this. We're just going to and we work very well together. Yeah. The county is really helpful though. The, um, the officers, they're very helpful in helping us uh, get what we need also. Supply-wise. I would have involved them right away. They're, they've been really helpful. Would you? Yes, I would definitely involve them. And don't be afraid to like ask for something. You know, and don't be afraid to, you know, if you think something's out of your realm and you can't do it, don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, I think this dog's injuries are a little out of my scope. It needs to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's what happened with Blake. She was too burned. Yeah. 